you know, so having talked about cherubs, all right, uh, cherubs are a class of din. They are not in the same class with, um, for example, the seraphs. They are not the same class with, um, you know, the beings in the book of Revelation chapter 4 referred to as the 24 elders. So the cherubs are a class of din. All right. Now, amongst the angelic, there are also, you know, angels that are usually sent on assignment, you know, by God. And within that order, within that hierarchy, there are, there are rankings. For example, you know, one of the popularly known angels, you know, in the Bible, in scriptures is Angel Michael. Now, Angel Michael is referred to as an archangel. That means uh, he is an angel that has authority over a class of angels. Now, it's important to understand that Michael is not a cherub. You know, same thing with Gabriel. Gabriel is not a cherub, neither is he a seraph. They are angels, but not in the same class with cherubs or seraph. You know, but within the class of the angelic that Michael, you know, you know, is in, he is an archangel. He is an archangel. That's what the Bible refers to him, all right, as an archangel. In the ranking of angels, there are, there are angels, all right, that, all right, within the ranking of angels, there are different hierarchies. For example, there are angels that, you know, advance or administer the purposes of God over nations. Now, there are also angels, you know, that contend or administer you know, the purposes and the plans of God over ministries, okay? Then also over lives, individual lives, you know, as it were. But you see, the way angels are, you know, apportioned their responsibility is according to their ranking, their hierarchy. For example, the angels that are given the responsibility of administering the purposes of God over nations are not in the same hierarchy. Though they are angels, but they are not in the same hierarchy or ranking with the angels that are given responsibility of, you know, administering or, you know, contending for the purposes of God in over ministries, you know, or over individual lives. They are different. Now, it's important that we understand this because within the architecture of the kingdom of God, all right, there are protocols that are informed, of course, by the rankings that exist among heavenly beings. Now, uh, let me let me divert a little bit and you know draw your attention to something. Now, you see, at the point of creation, when God was going to begin to create, all right, because when you look at the Bible in chapter four of Revelation, the way in which John saw the arrangement of the throne in connection to the proximity, the nearness of the various beings that are in the throne, to the throne, is key in understanding spiritual ranking. Now because in chapter 4 of Revelation, you know, John, after describing the throne, the very next thing he described that was immediately very close to the throne was the seven burning lamps, the seven burning lamps, which are the seven spirits. Of God. Then after that, he talked about the four living creatures. Then talked about, you know, the throne being surrounded, you know, round about by 24 thrones. Now, at the point of creation, the first thing that the Lord brought forth at the point of commencing, you know, creation are the seven spirits. That's why they are called the seven spirits of God. They are seven, you know, expressions of the God. They are not just seven, you know, expressions of the Holy Spirit. They are, ex they are the seven expressions of the Godhead. Now, after the seven spirits are the 24 elders. Now, it is our King James Bible that calls them 24 elders. All right. Actually, they are called 24 ancient ones. Now, they are God's 
24 ancient ones because they, besides the seven spirits, were created by God to become God's witnesses of his purposes and plans, which includes the work of creation. That means there was no aspect of creation right. that the 24 elders did not witness. That is why they are called 24 elders, old ones, or 24 ancient ones. They witnessed the creation. They witnessed, you know, the purposes and the plans of God that was, you know, put into the creation of all things. Then, you have the four living creatures that have been, that were created by God to be guardians, as it were, of the throne of God. Then, you know, you have the rest, all right, of the heavenly beings. You have, you know, the rest of, you know, angels. Now, it's important that we understand this so that we can know how to relate and, and function and, you know, you know, explore and live in the kingdom of our God. The kingdom, you know, of our, of, our, of our God. Because take, for example, in chapter 24, you know, of the book of Psalms, when Jesus, all right, prophetically was spoken of by, you know, David, how that Jesus ascended, you know, and in ascending, he came before gates, and a demand was made for the gates to open up. They were called everlasting doors. Now, these gates are not gates. The literal gates you, you know, have in your houses, you know, these gates actually are spirits. But though they are called gates, they are actually spirits that are used by God or that have the responsibility of, you know, constituting access into things that are available in God. So you see, because when Jesus ascended, in ascending, he had to inherit all things. That means that all of the spheres and realms, all right, that inhabits or where the mysteries or the multidimensional wisdom of God were located, Jesus had to ascend into all of these places according to chapter 1 of Ephesians to fill all things. That was how come he took ownership of all of these things. The Bible says in chapter 1 of Ephesians that he ascended up and filled all things for the church. So, in ascending to fill all things, he confronted all spirits, all right, under the government of God that were given the responsibility of custodying, protecting, and guarding the mysteries and the ways of God. Now, it was by ascending to fill all of these things, that's to fill all of this realm, to fill all of this dimension, to take ownership of all of the mysteries, all right, of the wisdom and counsel of God, that he took possession of all of these things to the advantage of you and I, the church. So it's important that we understand these things. Amen.